In this video, we're going to be making a custom anim graph for a pistol view model. This will set up all the animations for your weapon so that you can actually play them in the code. So I'll start by opening the anim graph editor and then right away I'll save it. Since I'm making a weapon, I like to keep all the assets for my weapons inside a weapons folder, so I'll save it there. I'm going to give it the exact same name as all my other assets for this, V underscore Magnum, because this is a Magnum gun. So this is the default layout for the anim graph, but I like to rearrange it a little. I like to have my parameters on the right, and then I like to have everything else in a line on the left. This is what I prefer. So in the top left is your 3D preview window. This functions the same as all other Source 2 preview windows. You can press Z or hold right click to fly around. I'm going to add my view model as a preview here. You can click the cog and then browse for the model. Now the model's in here. It's under the ground because it's a view model, so I can turn off the ground by unticking show ground plane. Now we can see the gun here. So we just have this weird T pose right now. I believe this is called the bind pose. To change that, we'll right click and create a node, and then we'll find animation clip. Here you can select from all the sequences in your model. I'm going to add the idle sequence, and then I'll change network mode to be client simulate. Since this is a first person view model, only the client is going to see it anyways, so there's no need to network it. You'd use server authoritative for something important like an interactive model that you need to be exactly the same on every client. Also, this is a looping animation, so we'll tick loop. Next, we'll right click, create a new node, and find final pose. This will be the final pose of the model. So we can click on this little arrow and drag it into this other little arrow. And now we can click here to start the preview and we can see it in the idle pose. It can't do anything yet. We have to add more animations and hook it up to a state machine. So I'll create a new animation clip node and then add my other animations. So I have deploy. I want this to be client simulate and it's not looping. I can copy paste this and add it for the other animations. This gun has animations for deploy, fire, and reload. So right now, if I run it, it's still only going to play the idle animation because I haven't hooked up a state machine. So I'll add a new node and find state machine. It's kind of hard to find things in this giant list. I'll also set this to client simulate. And now I can double click the state machine to edit it. This basically opens up a subfolder showing off the state machine. You can navigate it on the top left here. So I'm going to right click and create a new state. This will be the base that evaluates what pose we're supposed to be in. You can name it anything you want. Face punch names there is any, so I'm going to call it that. And I'm going to tick always evaluate. Next I'll add a couple more states. I'll add a reload state, a fire state, and a deploy state, because those are the three animations that I have other than idle. And then I'll also add idle over here. So we'll have to add transitions between these states so I can right click and drag to create a little arrow. And then I can click the arrow and add a condition. This will be a parameter condition. And I will assign it to a parameter, which I haven't set up yet. So I'll go back to the main screen, and then I will add some parameters here. I'll click the little plus, and I'm going to add a bool parameter. So this is an on or off, a one or a zero. I'll give it a name, I'll call it deploy, and then I'll take auto reset. What this does is it basically makes it work like a button. You press it once, and then it'll activate it, and then automatically turn back off. If auto reset is off, then it'll act like a switch, and you'll toggle between on and off. I'll add a couple more bool parameters for Fire, also tick auto reset, and another one for reload. I have to make sure these are all auto reset. Now I'll go back into the state machine by double clicking it, and then going back to my little line here, my transition, and I can set the condition to be deploy. And then you can change it here to be equal or not equal. We're going to set it so that it's equal to checkmarked which basically means when the deploy parameter has been activated. 
Now I'll do the same thing. I'll right click and drag my arrow and then I'll edit the transition and add a condition, a parameter condition. And this one's going to be for firing. So I'll take it to fire and tick a little box. Same thing for reload, right click and drag, click the arrow and add a parameter condition for reloading. Now I have to connect these up so it goes back to idle when it's done playing. So I'll right click and make my transition, edit the transition and I'll add a condition on finished. Now I'll do the same thing for fire and deploy. Let's go back to the main page and connect the animations up to the state machine. I can disconnect this line by clicking on the arrow here, and then I'll connect these up to their appropriate spots. So idle goes to idle, deploy goes to deploy, fire goes to fire, and reload goes to reload. You can leave any blank, and then I'll connect my state machine's output to the input of the final pose. And now if I run it, it should be working. But it's not actually working because we didn't set a default state for the state machine. So I have to go back into the state machine and change deploy to be start state. Now, if I click the preview, it'll work. When I'm in the preview mode, I can change these parameters to play the animations. Nothing I tweak in here will be saved. So you can change any parameters you want in the preview without having to worry about messing stuff up. Here we can see the animations are definitely working. However, there is a little bit of smoothing you probably can't notice in the editor, but in game, if you were firing, it might seem a little laggy. That's because there's a 0.2 blend duration by default. So I'll just change that to zero. That'll blend the animations together. If I set it to one, we can actually see that in action. The pistol doesn't even pop up because it's blended so much. I'll lower this back down to zero. Now if I go back, there's a couple more things I can do. First, I'm going to rearrange these so it's not spaghetti. There we go. At this point, it's fully functional and it'll work fine in game. But what if I want to be able to change the speed of the animations? For example, if I have a perk in my game mode that lets me reload faster, you have to add a modifier in here. So I'll right click, create node, and then find speed scale. I'll move this to be in between my reload and the state machine. And then I'll click here to disconnect my reload animation and hook it up to the speed scale. Now I need a parameter for this, so I'll add one. This will be a float parameter. If you're making an anim graph, you probably already know what all of these are. A float is basically a number. I'll give this a name. I'll call it reload underscore speed. And now I can change the values up here. There's a minimum and a maximum value. I'll just set this to 10. That's pretty quick. And the default value I'll have set to one. Now I'll go into my speed scale and I'll assign the parameter to be the reload speed. And again, I can change this to be client simulate. I can also change my final pose to be client simulate, but I don't actually have to. Because the animations over here are all set to be client simulate, it'll force everything down the line to also be client simulate. Now I have my speed scale set up so I can preview and I can change the reload scale right here by dragging the bar and the reload will change as you can see. Again, changing the parameters in the preview does not actually change them. This is just a preview. So when I turn off the preview, the parameters will get reset. This deploy animation is actually pretty slow and face punch thinks so too. So we'll change it. You don't always have to use a speed scale, but you'll want to if you want to be able to dynamically change it in code. All of the parameters here are adjustable in your C sharp code. If I want to hard code a scale change, I can click on the animation and then change the playback speed. So face punch actually had their set to two, which I prefer. So I'll preview it and he pulls it out twice as fast. There are a lot of other nodes that you can play with. I don't really know what most of them do, and you won't really need most of them for a view model, but I'm sure they're very useful for other things. For example, let's take a look at the anim graph for the citizen. This thing is huge and it's so complex, but that's what you have to do for a player model. 
This one is actually so advanced and so customizable. You can change so many settings in here. There's actually a sit animation. I don't think anyone's actually used this yet. Well, that's it. I'll show it off real quick in game just to show that it's working. I didn't save it, so it looks like the deploy's kind of slow. I'll open it back up and save it again. Yep, looks like the deploy's a lot quicker now. And the reload is working. Perfect. Obviously, you'll have to code all the animations to play, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Well, like, comment, and subscribe. An easier method of making an anim graph would just be copying and pasting an existing one 